I'm going to turn the rest of the evening, which is about an hour, over to Mike Puckett. Mike is the guy, is the certification guy at SolidWorks. So he's the guy who's going to answer any questions you have on certification. I'm going to be giving the certification exam next Tuesday. So this is your big chance to get any inside information from Mike. And I really appreciate Mike joining the meeting as well. It's, he's, he's a regular presenter for the Laney SolidWorks users group. And it's always fabulous that he's, he's willing to give us his time and his attention. Thanks, Elise. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. All right, great. So um, if I try to share my screen, basically what's going to happen is it's going to show you um, my video setup and not what I really want to show you. So everything kind of comes through a, a, a video mixer that I have. So if you guys pin my video, um, it'll stay there. But I think as long as I keep talking, it'll stay live up there anyways, and you guys will continue to see me. So if there's any issues, let me know. Um, but basically, you're going to have to look at me for another few seconds anyway. So um, first of all, thanks, John Paulo, for that great uh, explanation of 3D experience a platform and kind of where things are going. Um, I personally, I really like that last uh, demonstration about the flow optimization of those, the air ducts. Uh, the fact that we can do stuff on um, in software nowadays like that is just, it's uh, completely incredible to me, especially going, uh, being a long time SOLIDWORKS user going back, our user going back to uh, geez, 1999, um, thinking back to what the limitations were then and what they can do now. So for all you guys uh, in the room and, and taking the classes, uh, quote unquote, young engineers uh, charting a path for your future. There is definitely exciting times. There's um, over the last 11 years that I've been with SOLIDWORKS, uh, I look at the tools and how they evolve. And there's many, many times that I look at those tools and think to myself, I really wish those were around when I was m designing molds um, 12, 15 years ago using SOLIDWORKS. So um, exciting times. It really is. Um, so Definitely um, look forward to the career that you have ahead of you uh, using, so hopefully using SOLIDWORKS and uh, in mechanical engineering. So what, um, what I'm gonna do tonight is I only have a couple of slides for you guys. Um, and then we're just gonna, we're gonna jump into SOLIDWORKS basically. So uh, Elise tells me that you guys are getting ready to uh, take your CSWA exam. And um, some of you guys might be a little nervous, but the nice thing is you have to, you have the ability to take it in the comfort of your own home. So you don't have to worry about um, going and using a strange computer or something like that, or sitting in a room full of people and getting nervous when somebody finishes after five minutes and you've barely logged in and, um, and started the exam. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks about how to kind of uh, navigate your way through the exam and some critical things when using the software. So at, at the end of the day, you're, you're taking an exam in SOLIDWORKS or, or about the use of SOLIDWORKS. So don't worry too much about the exam tool itself. Uh, our goal is to test you on your ability to use SOLIDWORKS and not your ability to take an exam. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some exam prep using the CSWP sample exam. So don't get too wrapped up in the fact that I'm showing you a CSWP file. Um, these, all the stuff, I'm gonna, the modeling tricks I'm going to show you basically apply to anything you do in SOLIDWORKS. We, we don't have the ability to see how you create something in SOLIDWORKS. So let's take, for example, um, imagine a, a one by one by one cube and how you would model that. Most of you guys are gonna instantly think, okay, well, I'm gonna pick a plane, I'm gonna start a sketch, I'm gonna sketch a rectangle, um, uh, I'm gonna dimension it one by one, and then I'm gonna extrude it by, by a value of one as well. Uh, and then you're gonna weigh it, and how much does it weigh? Um, al uh, alternately, you could sketch um, six one by one surfaces, knit it, and then create a solid, and still come up with the same exact value, right? Obviously, one method is gonna take you much longer than the other. And so that's really where at the core of the exams, what we're trying to get to, we're trying to find out, can you use the software efficiently and in a way that'll help you get uh, your job done much quicker. Um, also robust models. If you have to go back and change that model to a two by two, all right, two by two by two, uh, it's super easy to do on the first example using the sketch square, as opposed to having to go back and change six services. So that's what we're looking at. So um, <clears throat> this is, all of our exams, with the, ex with the exception of the experts, expert level exams, have, um, have sample exams. Uh, in the case of the CSWP, it's a 32 page PDF file that you can follow along with. Um, and you actually use the software to, or the, our tester software to take the sample exam. 
So um, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to model this part live for you. And uh, I'm just going to show you some tips and tricks in here. And I want to point out some things here um, for you to pay attention to. We use variables in the exams, all right? And this is so that we can take this model here and through uh, an API that we have, we can essentially create about 500 versions of this model. And what that helps us mainly with is, um, is cheating, I guess, if you will, is that it's hard to just grab a model off the internet, download it, measure it, and then, put, and, and then, um, and then upload or input the value. Um, and we do some subtle changes as well. So we put these var variables in here, uh, in, inside the exam. So the, they're just basic variables most of the time, but you know, as you see down here for X and Y, we actually use um, some calculations in their equations. So the first tip I'm gonna give you is that if you do not know how to use um, equations or global variables, uh, study up on it and figure out how to use them before prior to taking the exam. It will save you a load of time. Um, as you see in this, ex in this part here, the, the outside square shape of this, one dimension is A, one dimension is B, right? So what we do is we're gonna model this part and then we're gonna ask you how much it weighs. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna start changing these values on you. So if you see like D is used a couple of times, you can go in there if you want and you can go back and physically or type those dimensions in, but you have to be super careful that you don't forget a dimension somewhere, right? Whereas opposed to if it's just a global variable, you only have to change it once, right? So on the next update of the model, you don't even have to go in and interact with the model. You go to the global variables, change the values, hit okay, rebuild, boom, there's your answer, right? Again, it's all about quickness and how, how quick you can get through it. If you just go in there and update those variables, it'll take you 30 seconds. If you're the guy that's gonna go in there and change all the dimensions, you're gonna be minutes into it. And these are timed exams. So do you wanna be able to, do you wanna use the path where you can do it in, 30 seconds or three minutes, right? Because at the exam, when you got those three minutes left or when you're down to zero, you really, you're really gonna wish you had those three minutes back. Um, a couple other things. Uh, in order to weigh something, we need to know what the material is, right? For some reason, if your default material is already set to air, you're not gonna get much value out of how much a part weighs. So uh, we always clearly call out the, the materials and we never use any sort of weird exotic material or we don't modify the default material properties. Most of the time it's gonna be either brass or steel or some generic plastic, that's it. Again, we wanna test your ability to use the software, not to your ability to take the exam. Uh, all the exams are in millimeters, grams and seconds. So we ask you, so you model the millimeters and we ask you how much it weighs in grams. Um, that's just because we're a, a global program and every other country in the world except for us uses met the metric system. Um, the nice thing about it is they're whole numbers. So you don't have to worry about fractions or anything else like that. Um, again, and then we call everything out. Same thing here with the whole wizard. We're using the standard whole wizard catalog that comes um, default into SOLIDWORKS. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump over into SOLIDWORKS and uh, we're gonna start there. So <clears throat> first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start a new part. And in my templates, my default templates that I've dragged around with me for years now. Um, I have a, a, a millimeter part. So by setting that template to millimeters, I can already see that I'm already in millimeters, grams, and seconds. A quick way to change this is down here in this bottom right-hand corner. You can change the units on the fly right there. All right, that's the quickest way to do it. All right, so remember, we wanna set equations, right? So, that, um, or, or global variables. Um, over here in my feature manager, or my feature tree, I have the equations folder showing. All right, now I, by default, I believe it only shows up if you have equations defined. So you can go into the system settings, um, if I can remember how to, or into the options. And I think under feature tree, feature manager, you'll see these hide show tree items. Just go in here and find um, equations, uh, wherever it's at, and then just change it from automatic to show, and then hit okay. And if you save that into your template, it'll actually always be there. Okay, and it's just, it's just easier to use. So I'm gonna right click on the equ equations because I'm gonna start dimensioning, I'm gonna start building that square, right? A, that's A by B sizes. So before I even sketch anything, I need to have those variables in there. So it's a little misleading, it's called equations because it also contains variables. So right click, manage equations, and this box comes up. And you see we have global variables here. Um, there's uh, equations and stuff down here. So I'm just gonna, 
I'm going to start typing in here. All right. And so I'm looking at my list that I have. I have my cheat sheet sitting here next to me. Um, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven variables to set here. The first one's going to be a, so I'm just going to click, I'm just going to type a, um, hit enter and it's automatically going to go over to the value and equation column. And a on the first iteration of the part is 213 millimeters. Hit enter again. Okay. And I can hit enter one more time and it'll take me back to the global variables column and activate the next cell. So this one's going to be B. Uh, enter again is going to be 200. Enter and then enter. C is going to be 170. And it's just automatically um, uh, setting it to a, a variable. Mm -hmm. Enter again. Uh, D is going to be 130. Oops, sorry. D, uh, 130. Let's see. E is going to be 41. Um, F is the whole wizard call out. So we don't obviously we're not going to put that in here. And then now I'm left with my two equations, X and Y. So X is actually going to be, this is where I need to use my mouse again. This is actually going to be a, and then divided, uh, by three. And then I'm going to enter and it's going to evaluate that number out here. All right. Uh, and then let's see, enter again. And one more variable is Y. And this is going to be, let's see, uh, uh, B divided by three and then plus 10. All right. So it's very critical that you type in these values right here, because this is what's going to build your part. If this is wrong, your part's going to be wrong. So um, starting out, just double check those variables and make sure that they're all correct. And I'm going to click. Okay. Now let's go back and peek at the drawing again, really quick. Um, and we'll see that um, it's kind of basic here, the, the shape. I do notice that the dimensions are all called off this one corner over here. Um, so I'm just by default gonna, gonna use that as my origin. Now we do not follow any sort of drawing standard whatsoever. The only standard that we have is to over dimension and make the drawings as clear as they can. So you're not spending time hunting around for dimensions. Again, um, I keep mentioning this, but we're, we're testing your abilities to use a software and not to take an exam. So um, make fun of us all you want uh, about our drawings, but um, you should never lack a dimension anywhere. Um, so I'm gonna start there. My, my, basically my process here is gonna be, is I'm gonna draw the base square here. Uh, I'm gonna draw this, what I call the wall that goes around here. Uh, and then I'm gonna do these two cylinders, uh, do the cutout, and then we'll do this. I'm sorry, we do a little, this little boss here, and then finally end up with the, um, the counterbore here. Or I'm sorry, the little, the, the cutout that's down at the bottom, right? And there's specific reasons why, and I'll point those out. So uh, to begin the square, it's uh, gonna be A by B. So we'll come back here to SOLIDWORKS. <clears throat> I'm just gonna top, sketch on my top plane. Uh, orientation doesn't matter because um, we're not gonna ask for any sort of uh, X, Y, Z value. We're just gonna ask how, how much it weighs. So um, when I'm in SOLIDWORKS, I use the S key. So when you see this toolbar pop up, what I'm doing is I'm hitting the S key on my keyboard. This is the shortcut toolbar that's been around for, for quite a few years and it's customizable. There's four different modes. Um, there's sketch, which we're in now. There's um, when you're in basically just part mode. Uh, there's assembly and then drawings. And these are, you customize just like any other toolbar. You drag and drop tools onto there and you customize it. If you look on here, what I have, I have all my basic tools. So what you're gonna notice is that I'm rarely gonna leave the graphics window at all and come over to interact with these toolbars. I can essentially turn these toolbars off and gain some more real estate on my screen if I want to, because I've just kind of, I've, I've, I've massaged or just kind of set up these toolbars over the year. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a corner rectangle. And I'm gonna start on the origin and just kind of drag it out. Okay, I hit F to go to fit the screen. The nice thing about SOLIDWORKS, there's a setting in here is that the first dimension you make will scale the drawing to what it is, okay? So I have no idea what this line length is right now, um, but um, it's gonna be, this dimension is gonna be B down here, and this is gonna be A. So as you notice, when I set the first dimension, the size of the sketch is not gonna change. So I'm gonna grab my dimension tool, and when we're using equations, the, the syntax is pretty simple. I'm just gonna grab that line and drop it here. Now I'm gonna go um, equals uh, double quotes A and double quotes, and you see it turns blue and hit enter. Now if I'm really good, I hit enter again, and it'll accept it and it'll give me the little, um, I forget what the symbol is called, but I call it the equation symbol. If, as long as you see that, that means that it's linked back to our A variable, which is 213 millimeters, okay? Again, um, 
and you notice it didn't scale the drawing. It just, it picked up that. It said it sets the scale based on the first drawing. For any of you guys that have been around SOLIDWORKS for years, um, you might remember when you sketch something, you always had to pay attention to the length of the lines because that first dimension might turn things inside out basically on how roughly you were, uh, how far off you were on those dimensions. So here we'll drop this dimension here. Again, this is gonna be B. So this is gonna go uh, double quotes, B, uh, double quotes, and then hit enter, and then enter one more time. So you know, that time it didn't accept it. For some reason it grabbed it, but it didn't populate it. So we can go in here and double click this. And, cause I didn't hit the equal sign, that might have been it. There we go. So I think I, think I might've forgot the equal sign. And then let's go back and look um, here, even though I have the drawing, I can, I just wanna take you guys back to the drawing so you guys can see it. Uh, there's two different heights here. So there's this little square over here is 35 millimeters and this is 25 millimeters for the rest of it. So do I really wanna extrude it 35 millimeters then cut all this away? Or do I just do 25 and then come back and make this 10 millimeters above it, right? So I'm gonna obviously, I'm gonna do the 25 millimeter extrusion. Uh, hit my S key again, and you see now the extruded boss base icon is lit up. We'll grab that. It's going to rotate around. I'm going to type in 25, enter, and then enter. Okay. This is now, this is the most single important tip I can give you on when taking the exams. Okay. Um, we receive reports every now and then every few years that once in a while SOLIDWORKS crashes. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to save the part and you want to save it often. My rule is I like to save after every few features or so. It basically, you, wanna, you need to decide how far back do you want to go if SOLIDWORKS or your computer crashes, right? Okay, part three to me is a great name for this. And so we're just going to accept it, all right? Now I don't have to go back into that feature. So, um, that's, so that's the base part for now. Go back here. The next thing I want to do, as I mentioned, is this wall right here, okay? Now we can see that this is, um, there's some dimensions. It it's, it's, starts at C. Um, the thickness is 15 millimeters. Uh, it's 80 by 80. And then by the time you define this, you don't need to define the radius because it's going to be fully defined, right? So I'm going to sketch three entities here, and then I'm going to show you how to, um, to complete the, um, the sketch profile without having to sketch anything else. So I'm going to sketch on this surface here. And I like to sketch normal too. Somebody asked me every now and then, why don't I just turn on the setting that... Um, um, moves, rotate, sketch, normal two, because it always rotates at normal two, no matter what you do. And I only want it at the beginning of the sketch. So when I like to, when I start the, the feature itself, the extruder, whatever, I like to rotate it around. And uh, that feature just doesn't do it for me. So I'm gonna hit S key, grab my line tool and just roughly sketch this out. This is gonna be the next uh, tip here for a sketching trick. I'm in, a, in line mode, right? And you watch the little yellow, I'm sorry, the, um, the little icon next to the pencil. It means I'm in a line, right? The yellow is the right, is the relation. Excuse me, what it's telling me is it's gonna create a, a vertical sketch relation. That's why it's yellow. If it's white, it's called an inferred relation. Um, think of that as just like it's an assistant, um, assistant uh, uh, relation that is kind of positioning it, but it's not gonna lock it. If it's yellow with the sketch relation, it's gonna lock it in that vertical relation. So um, it, line tool is still active. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click and, and drop it. And I'm gonna move my mouse away, but then I'm gonna come back and hover over the point and you see it changes um, to an arc, okay? Uh, and I'll go back and I'll show you guys how to do that again. Once I drop it, it goes back to a line tool and I can come and drag it there, All right? Let's go back again, because every time usually when I'm there in the room at, uh, at Laney, Everyone always asks to see that again. So again, I'm just gonna click the edge here, come out vertical or uh, vertical like that, move away and then move back. And then it's gonna turn into an arc, drag it and then come off to the side. All right, escape and that ends my tool, that ends my command. Now, um, again, so the dimension is, is C. So uh, we're gonna grab the dimension tool from this edge out to here. And that's going to be equals double quote C, double quote, enter, enter. And then the same thing up here. This is going to be here to here. Equals double quote C, double quote, enter, enter. Um, and then these are both 80 millimeters. So it's going to be 80. Now in the drawing, it dimensions both of them. 
I could easily set an equal re uh, relation if I wanted to, but if it's calling it out twice, I would dimension it twice. Okay, because who knows, um, Avelino that designs all these on my team, he's, he's pretty evil sometimes, so he might kind of to fool, uh, to fool you a little bit. So uh, we could do a thin uh, extrude if we wanted to, a thin feature if we wanted to, but if I just control select these three uh, entities uh, and on my, uh, S, uh, my shortcut toolbar, I have um, offset. Um, so I'm gonna grab the offset entities. And there's some really cool options inside offset entities that people don't pay attention to. So first of all, the thickness is gonna be 15 millimeters. And then down here, you can actually cap the ends. You can cap them with arcs or you can cap them with lines. So I'm gonna cap them with lines and hit okay. And I have a fully enclosed um, uh, sketch volume that based off three sketch entities that I created. Now, again, going back to, to saving time, I could have gone in, converted the, this line, converted entities for this line, converted entities for this line, sketch these, and then maybe offset these, then trim, 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 right? W one method is a huge time saver over the other. Let's go back and see how tall this wall is. Um, it's, uh, let's see, it's called out right here. It's 95 millimeters off the bottom, okay? Um, so a couple things we can do. You can do the math if you want. So it's 70 millimeters from the, the, surf, the place that we're sketching on, or we can utilize some tools inside the feature itself. So rotate this around a little bit, grab my extrude tool, um, and we can change things. So from is, so right now we're, we're extruding, we're creating a boss extrude from the sketch plane. Here I can change, I can go from, let's create a boss extrude from a surface face or plane. Now there's a selection box in here. Let's select the bottom here. Okay, and then it's blind and let's type in 95. Okay, now the nice thing about that, and we'll hit enter, is that if this thickness changes, okay, from 25 to 20, the distance from the bottom down here to the top is always gonna be 95. If I, if I, I sketched on, um, and I, if I extrude and did the math, I have to remember to come back in and add or remove the, the, the difference on there as well. Otherwise the geometry is gonna be incorrect. I could have sketched on this bottom face, um, but when you sketch on here, it goes upside right. And to me, I like to sketch right side up instead of upside down. You can rotate things around, but just take advantage of those tools. Uh, with that, and then let's go back and look and see what's next. So we have um, the two bosses. This is where I'm gonna show you why uh, I did it in this order. So if you look at these bosses, this is where you need to pay attention to some of the, the, the variables. If you see this one, the inner diameter is a, a diameter of E and the outer diameter is X. Whereas this one over here, the inner diameter still is E, but the outside is Y. All right, so, so kind of, um, so pay attention to those things. There's multiple ways you can try and do this. If, even if they were the same, you could try and um, model one and then, do, and then do a pattern, a circular pattern. Um, sometimes it's just as simple to just sketch the geometry and move on um, it, it, instead of trying to fiddle with the settings of um, which ones you want, how many degrees, all that other stuff. So we'll sketch this one um, so it's X by E. The reason I did the wall first, if we go back and look, is that it's on the center line of that wall. It's 95 millimeter. So what that allows me to do is, first of all, it gives me a face to sketch on, okay? So I can click, quickly click on that. But the greatest part is that when I grab my circle tool, it gives me a point to, 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 um, to sketch the circles, all right? And now, the, and now they're, they're basically locked in position. I didn't have to dimension it. I didn't have to move everything on. So of course, I've done this presentation hundreds of times, right? But it, this is one of the, the sketch uh, techniques that I developed, that I used right from the get-go is look at the model and see how you want to create things. Spend a minute or so diagnosing it, saying, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. This is my, my approach, and then go for it. Okay, so uh, let's grab the dimension tool. Remember, the inside diameter is E on both of them. And then on this one, the outside is X. Sometimes it doesn't get it, so there's the check mark. Okay, so now there's our sketch. Let's go back and check out one thing here, though. If you notice, and this is again a trickery of the design of the part, it's 10 millimeters off that face, right? So um, if I could see you guys all in the room, I would ask you to show your hands. How many of you guys would have created a plane and then sketched from there, right? 
Um, but it's just as simple to, again, use the tools, the options that are available in these um, tools. I, I, have, I have the uh, students click their yes button so you can get an idea of who's okay. following you. All right, great. Um, so again, use these tools. So uh, from, we can go offset. And so it's 10 millimeters. Okay. And just like everything else in SOLIDWORKS, the direction, you always have to change the direction, right? It just never, it's never going the direction that you want. So hit the direction arrow there, change it around. And then the, 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 the length of that, if we go back and look, is you can see that it's, it's a variable, D. Okay. We've used variables for sketches, but can we use it in features? Of course we can. This is SOLIDWORKS, right? We can, we can do whatever we want. So when you hear, it's just the same syntax, equals double quote D, double quote, enter, enter. All right. And that's it, okay? Um, you can, if you want to, you can double check to see, see what these are. Uh, the D variable was set to 130 and it's 130, okay? As long as I typed in 130, it's gonna do that. G going back to what John Paulo said, the, the quote from, uh, I forget who it was that he quoted, uh, computers can only your questions, right? So it's gonna do exactly what you told it to. So again, um, hit the save, okay? And we're getting there pretty quickly. Uh, so we'll come over here and we're basically going to replicate the same process. So I'm going to sketch on here. Again, I'm going to use that center point um, as my uh, sketch relation and just going to kind of sketch two circles roughly. I always try to make them um, pretty ob obscure from each other. So uh, I don't have one going inside of the, uh, inside and out of, the, of each other. Dimension these, again, the inner diameter is the same on both. It's E. And then this one over here, this is different. This is the this is actually Y. Okay. And so there we, we quickly got that set up here. And then again, it's just the same kind of technique we used again. Uh, we're going to offset it here, 10 millimeters. And then we're going to flip that around. And then it's going to be, this is D. They're both D as far as the lengths. So I'm gonna select that equals double quote D, double quote, enter, enter. All right, and then we'll save it again. Pretty much I always save for every, uh, every kind of, um, every feature I create. And it's really because, it, because it's here and available for me. So I don't think you guys have seen me leave the, this area once. I haven't used any of the toolbars at all. So in here, it's, don't fret over things like this when you have geometry in there. Um, just think about how you make things. So. Um, I can just simply cut it away. So I'm going to sketch on here and I'm going to reuse geometry. So I'm going to grab this edge. I'm going to click um, uh, convert entities, which basically converts that line. I'm going to spin it around. Okay. And um, then I'm going to hit extrude cut and I'm going to double click this face. All right. And the reason I double click that face is now it's up to surface. Okay. This cut is always going to perform. It's always going to cut whatever is in there, no matter how long this cylinder gets. All right, so very important. And that's one of the key things about parametric CAD modelers is that is reusing geometry to do things, okay? I could have said that I know that the length of those are D and D is equal to 130. And I could have just done 130 millimeter sketch or extrude cut, right? But what happens if this changes and it only goes down say 15, all right? It leaves, you know, 115 millimeters or whatever was behind there in there, all right? So always be kind of careful with things like that. If you can... Reference geometry, um, existing geometry, it's always the, the best thing to do. And Elise, I'm going to um, depend on you to, to let me know if there's any questions along the way. So again, um, just convert entities oh, so on that. You can raise your hand if you have a question. And... Yeah, just, just let me know because I, I have Zoom running off on another computer over here, but I'm yeah. um, paying attention to my screen here. <laughs> yeah, or if you need them to like show you something again or whatever. Because yep. um, this demo is basically to help you get, give you an idea because I know you guys have been watching me prep you and you can see um, Mike does things differently than me. And that's always, a, that's always very interesting. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem with, um, if there's a problem with, um, with, 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 the, with CAD programs is if there's one way to do something, there's 10 other ways. Um, and trying to find the best way, I don't proclaim this to be the best way by any means. Um, and when early on when I was learning SOLIDWORKS, one of the things, the uh, methods that I used to learn the software, and I, I learned a lot, was basically just diagnosing other people's models. 
So grabbing their, grabbing the rollback bar and just downloading a model from somewhere random, like 3d content central or, um, any of those other sites where you can download models and then just rolling back and feature by feature, seeing how they create it, how they sketch things, how do they do it? I thought, okay, that was kind of interesting. Um, watching, well, there was no videos at the time. This is back before YouTube even existed, but just watching people model things and then just messing around. So, um, again, when I, when I first built this model, um, it, it's the tree looks nothing like it does now, you know, it was always constantly refining it. So, um, I didn't change anything on where we were um, Mike, Zach has a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, so when, when you're um, linking values, you're doing it uh, on, in the drawing space. Uh, we were taught to do it uh, by uh, clicking on the dimensions and then uh, going to link values. And I've noticed that it, it gives us a different uh, symbol. We get a, an infinity sign in front of our uh, value whereas you're getting a sigma and is there a difference between those two even though we're doing the same funk the, the same you know the same process uh yeah so basically the the equations manager it's it's an evolution of um linked values so um linked dimensions which is what we used to promote uh it was the way to do it because that was the only way um, a few years back, when, um, and I know the programmer who built all this interface at SolidWorks, it was to kind of bring everything into one kind of edge here. And so to me, this is just the easy place to go into. We're going to do the same thing. So um, one, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, this, the nice thing here is that you can, you can manage multiple things. Uh, whereas linked values, I, I, I don't even know if I can remember how to do a linked value, but uh, our linked dimension. But in here, it's just a simple interface. So there's a lot of work put into this. And that's kind of, that's the only reason that I use it. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, let's see. We're still, we'll go back here. We want to do this cut. Again, I'm just going to, it's double click that face, right click the mouse and it's done. I mean, it's just super simple like that way, that way. All right. Uh, so we'll save it again. Let's go back and look at the part and see where we're going next. So I told you guys we'll do this little boss next. Um, and the reason I do this boss is because if you look at this offset, there's nine millimeter offset, right? I want to reuse this geometry. I don't want to sketch this shape twice. All right, so I quickly can see it's like, okay, well, if I sketch this first, then I can reuse it here. All right, that's also the reason that the wall was done as first as well. So um, I'll give you a little, little uh, a hint that this whole cutout shape, I'm not going to sketch anything to create that cutout. I'm not going to sketch one sketch entity on there at all. Um, and so we'll, we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes here. So this, uh, this little uh, boss up here is 60 by 60. And again, it's, it's 10 millimeters above or 35 millimeters from the bottom. So uh, again, I'm gonna sketch here because I would like to work right side up and not uh, upside down. And I'm just gonna grab my corner rectangle tool, drop it on the origin right here and just kind of roughly drag it out and then dimension it 60 by 60. Got pretty close there, 54. Right, and then this is just gonna is gonna come up uh, off the bottom. So again, use a technique that we used uh, earlier. I'm gonna change the from from uh, a different to a different plane. And click that bottom, and then this is gonna be 35. All right, and so I can guarantee you guys, and I'm willing to bet anything, uh, especially living here in Vegas, that this is 10 millimeters above that surface. Okay, so if we look at uh, the distance, is 10 millimeters. Uh, so if we go back and uh, look, there's, um, there's a whole wizard call. There's a whole wizard called out there. And it's basically just, um, let's see, it's an M8 um, counterbore using the, the standard sizes. So um, when I use whole wizard, I like, to, um, I like to, to click on the surface so I don't have to deal with 3D sketches. So I always like to start on the surface and then um, I've actually put whole wizard on this. This pop-up toolbar, this is called the context sensitive um, menu bar, I believe. It's that really cool one that has a lot of information in it. And depending on what you click, this changes. So it's a little bit of predictive type of software where it's looking to see what you've selected and say, okay, well, uh, this might be what they're trying to do. If anybody remembers Clippy from the old Microsoft Office days, it's kind of like our version of Clippy, if you will. Um, it's, it's, um, it's doing things to show you, okay, this is, this is what you're trying to do. Um, just as annoying as Clippy was, um, this can get annoying too, because if you move away, it disappears, right? And now I know you've all gone to this like, oh, crud, I, I wanted something on that toolbar, okay? If you move your cursor back to the general area and hit control, most of the time it'll come up and now it's, it's not. So it does happen usually when you control select a couple entities 
and you come back and you hit control and it'll pop up. So, you know, so as I move away, as long as you come back to the general area and hit the control key, it'll pop up, all right? So that's kind of a trick. The reason it's not working here is because I'm only, I'm only selecting one, one entity. So it doesn't really know what I'm doing. Um, but again, if you're, if you're control selecting two things, and this thing can pops up, moves away, bring your cursor back over to the area it was, hit the control key and it'll pop back up. This is a question that I ask um, our reseller AEs in uh, technical presentations when they're, when they're testing live in front of us for their presenter certification. I ask them how that works and they, few people know about it and it's really just to kind of see if they sweat a little bit. And then if they answer me, oh, there's no way to, most of them will say, a lot of times they'll say, no, there's no way to bring it back up, you know? Um, so it's a really, it's a teaching moment, if you will, um, for them. So again, I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna, I added, you can drag drop stuff onto this toolbar. I added a whole wizard, so it's there. And then um, we're gonna grab the, the M8s. So uh, let's see, uh, I got to change because I was doing some other stuff the other day. Let's go back to metric. Uh, we're in counterbore and then M8. And we're in counter, so it should be good. And then come over here to positions. Um, again, this is going to drop like a point on here. So I'm going to purposely drop it like off center. All right. And then I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna right click and go to select and I wanna make it normal too. Now I need to put that thing in the center, right? So what do you do, dimension 30 by 30? Or do you just kind of, again, reuse some geometry? I'm gonna sketch a construction point line from corner to corner and only because it's 60 by 60 can I do this, right? I'm gonna grab the point, drop it on the line and then drag it down to that center point and boom, it's centered for me, okay? Simple, again, just, quick little things to reuse geometry instead of having to, um, to, to, to overdo it, if you will, right? Um, that looks a little small. I don't know if I got it right here or not, but I might, my database of whole wizard stuff goes back to my, the mold shop days and we had some pretty funky numbers here. So I'm not gonna claim that that's set right, um, but uh, we'll just go ahead and do it now, or we'll just go ahead and move on from there. It just looks kind of lost in that face for some reason. Um, so now this little cutout here, right? Um, obviously I need to fill it here. So at this point, you notice I haven't done any fillets anywhere. And a lot of times I like to try to wait till the, to the end to do them. Cause they're just, sometimes if you're reusing geometry, it can kind of screw things with you or screw with you a little bit on things. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these outside um, the 10 millimeter fillets. And then I'm gonna put this, um, let's see what is right there 15 <laughs> i always get caught on this because it's and this is another thing that he tries to do sometimes is he puts all the outside ones at 10 and then he throws you a little loop with that 15 in there to kind of make sure that you're paying attention so uh i can hear i'm going to grab my fillet tool and i'm going to type in 10 and we're going to do those four outside uh, ones here now this year i don't have to move my part if i don't want because i have selection through um solid bodies turned on so if you notice, as I hovered over that, that edge um, picked up and I was able to select it. Click OK, and then we'll do the 15 millimeter fillet. And again, I don't have to rotate it, grab that corner, and there it is, okay? Control Q is a rebuild. Um, that's just this keyboard shortcut that, um, Control Q, there's just several rebuilds. You have the little one up here. This will rebuild the features that have changed since your last rebuild. A Control Q, is basically a forced rebuild of every feature in your tree. Be very careful if you have a thousand features in your tree, because uh, if you hit that control key Q, you might as well go to lunch because it's gonna be a while before it gets done and, and you come back. So let's talk about that little cutout here at the base, okay? Uh, again, I promise you guys that I wasn't gonna use any sort of sketch entities here. Um, we'll put, the, I have to do the fillets on there. They're 10 millimeters, there's six of them. But basically it's a nine millimeter offset of that entire shape. And this is kind of done on purpose because he wants to see like um, who, how you're, how you're going to approach this. Are you going to be the person that goes in there and offsets each one? Are you going to try and sketch it and then dimension it? Or are you going to use the quick things? I'm not even going to, you're going to have to start a sketch. I'm just going to click here and then I'm going to hit, I'm um, uh, sorry, you do got to start a sketch. And with it still selected, okay, I don't want to deselect it. I want it still selected. I'm going to hit offset. All right, and it's nine millimeters, right? Nine, enter. Again, the direction is wrong, is wrong so we reverse it and then click OK, right? I didn't sketch any of those entities at all. It's then the geometry is there for me. Uh, so now if we go back and we put in those, those six 10 millimeter um, fillets, so I'm gonna grab a sketch fillet tool here. Uh, where are you at? There you are. 
and it's already set to 10. So I'm just gonna make sure that I put six of these in here. I have preview mode on, which is kind of cool. Shows you that it's actually gonna do there. All right, make sure not to forget any of those and we're done, okay? Now this one is, this cutout here is at least five millimeters from the bottom. Um, we'll get out of that here. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's been a while since I do this. We're gonna do an extrude cut, okay? Um, but I wanna offset it. And uh, let's see, I think I can do a double offset. Sketch plane here, um, maybe not. I'm trying to remember now. You can come off this edge and it's supposed to be five millimeters. So we'll go there. Um, I don't think I can do it though. So, um, try to remember how to do it. So I want to apologize. I'm basically just gonna go over my, break one of my rules and I'm just gonna cut that thing down to um, 15 millimeters. So it leaves me five millimeters in the bottom. So I forget how to do it. I apologize. If it comes back to me, well, I'll come back and we'll do this. So this is going to be 15. Okay. And there's my cutout. Control Q. All right. So there's one thing that I missed and that I have not done yet, that if I weigh this part, it's, you know, I probably just gave it away. If I weigh this part, it's going to be wrong. Is there anybody that wants to guess? Nobody? Nobody wants to speak out? <laughs> I think people are just struggling to keep up with you, Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm going. I'm sorry if I'm going fast. I'm trying to keep up. Can we with see you. the original again. <laughs> no, it's the material. Uh, I haven't yeah, specified first, uh, the material. Material, yeah. Whoever said material should get the first uh, uh, pick of the drip, a prize drawing at least. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, haven't uh, haven't picked a material yet. So um, again, material selection here is super easy. Right click, edit material, um, and in this case, I forget what we call out. It is um, alloy steel. Uh, really cool functionality in here. You can, this is new within a few years. You can search for materials. Uh, I love these little, these little um, search things that they put in here over the, over the years. It just, um, back in the day, man, it was just, it was not fun looking through these things. So, uh, especially in the, um, the, the system options. Oof, yeah. Uh, good luck looking for things in there. So alloy steel, apply, close. Okay. Um, it's going to be wrong because this, for some reason, this counterboard is still wrong. And, so if we go in here and let's see if we can see what's going on here. Metric type, uh, hex socket that, there we go. Oh, oh, wrong one. Socket head cap screw, that's why. Okay, all right, I was modeling something for my little scooter outside. I think that's what I was got wrong. It still looks small though. Um, is M8 right? Uh, yes, M8. Okay, well. Let's go in and see what's going on here. Uh, ah, close, normal. Let's see what the, oh, up to next. Uh, let's see the sizing is. Yeah, see this is, it's just um, through hole diameter should be 15. This is the nice thing, we do call this out in, in, the, in the instructions, in the test. And again, I'm gonna blame this back on um, the database that I'm using from the mold shop from back in the days. We use some weird screws, metric screws with uh, stainless and all these other kind of weird things. So, um, and then the final thing is 10. All right, so that looks much better. So if anybody thought that M8 counterboard looks strange, <laughs> now you know why. It's much different. Control Q, S, save. And then now we can measure this thing. And uh, so again here, um, I have the, um, mass properties on here. And let's see, we should be 14. Yeah, so we have some, oh, I, yep, let's go back. I instantly see what I missed. Okay, uh, we're missing the chamfers. So see these, there's um, four chamfers, two by 45. So they're on all four of those holes. So this, what it should be end up right now is this should weigh 14, um, Let's see, 14,207.34 grams. So we have extra material. So that was uh, instantly, I saw those fillets missing. So um, so let's go see, let's just grab a chamfer tool. And this is a two by 45. And again, just gonna grab these edges. I love the, the selection through hidden body or through solid bodies. Just a really, just brilliant type of uh, little tool there. And then we'll save it. And then let's see where we're at now if we're closer. Uh, well, let's see, what are we doing here? Um, 
14585. So we're still wrong here somewhere. So, um, of course, right? Uh, I'm just looking back at the drawing. If anybody kind of sees anything that we kind of missed or something, feel free to speak out. Um, Griffin has his hand up. Hi. Um, a second ago, you just talked about a selection through hidden bodies. Is that a default or is that a setting? Um, can you tell me something about that? Thanks. Uh, if it's default, I don't know, but um, it's inside the settings. So if we go in here and go selection, selection of hidden edges, um, allow selection in wireframe and H, uh, hidden lines visible mode. Okay. Thank so you. Default or not, I'm not sure, but that's where it's at. Great, thank you. Yep. Um, let's see here, control Q, what's going on here? Anybody see what Mike missed? I know you, he's kind of thrown the drawing up a few times. Always something stupid, that's for sure. Um, is the center line um, of the cylinders uh, dimension? Because I noticed it's, it's a little JPEG-y, but um, right underneath the, um, the F, or the top left view, it's 750, something like that? Yeah, so remember the, the, the thickness of this wall is 15, right? Oh, got it, okay. So it's, it's, it's the center line of that wall. That's, and going back, that's why we um, put the, um, the wall in first so we could take advantage of that center line or the, that, that midpoint. Um, I'm trying to see what else, if I miss something else, it's still too heavy. Of course, it only fails when John Paulo's on the call. That's why. So I want to blame it on him. He's gone now, so you're safe. Oh, I still see him on there, but I... Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh, oh, you. you are? Oh, okay. I thought you... Yeah, so when, I, when I'm fired tomorrow, you guys will know why. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. That's never going to happen. No, no, no. So um, I don't know. So I honestly can't, uh, and I'll figure it out in a little while. Of course, it'll come to me right as we as we're all signing off. Um, just going to mention you were you were talking about diagnosing uh, issues with other people's drawings. Like, that's actually uh, one of my biggest problems when I try to make a drawing and I and I come up with like uh, conflicting relations or like you know I try to add a dimension that causes the, the drawing to be over uh, the sketch to be overdefined. Um, yeah. How do you how do you diagnose those? The overdefined just start. Um, it'll it'll overdefine as soon as you click something. Um, mm -hmm. so you have to go in and, uh, if there's an over, if I knew how to recreate an overdefined situation, um, as you just, you'll see the things that are overdefined and you just got to delete one of them basically. Um, yeah. then you have to watch and pay attention that when you, um, uh, take, get rid of the overdefined situation that you leave, you don't leave something underdefined now. Right. So if you notice, if you guys notice, I use all fully defined sketches. It's just so people, so something can't move around, um, in the meantime. Um, so I'm just trying to see if there's anything here. It's, uh, let's see what's the diameter of this. 71, 76. Um, yep, that's still there. Uh, let's see, that's D130. So um, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to find it, um, which is unfortunate. This are make sure these are forty one, which is E. I mean, watching watching you um, diagnose this is pretty valuable because uh, it's pretty true to life for the practice stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, it is trying to figure out what it is, and it's I just don't. I'm not. Um, let's see here. Maybe it's make sure that I'm not. Uh, Elsa's suggesting you check the fillet radiuses because they're not uniform. Uh, which fillet radius is? Uh, I just feel like having, this is, you know, what my sixth or seventh time probably watching you make this part over my career as the TA. Um, I feel like the, the interior pocket radius is like one's 15. There, there's a bunch of nine, nine, eight, seven. It's yeah. hard to tell because the resolution's not fantastic, but um, they vary. And I know that you've missed one or two of those previously. Yeah. Oh, so, so you do remember I screwed this up in the, in the past. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So let's, uh, let's go through and measure them. So these are, these are nine, I'm sorry, these are 10 millimeter fillets in here. Um, so the radius of 10, we can go through, they're all created at the same point. So I would be surprised if anyone is different. Uh, so no, they're all 10 millimeters. Um, now this one up here is a 15. Are they supposed to all be 10 or are they supposed to, is one of them supposed to be like nine and one of them is 10 or something? So nine is the offset. Um, and then, so this one becomes a, a, a nine millimeter offset of this radius. So this is probably some odd radius in here. Um, yeah, so 24. Um, so the nine millimeter that you see in the drawing, if you go back here, that's just the offset here. And then it's calling out a, a, a 10 millimeter radius six places through there's what it's doing. Um, 15. Oh man, I just, I really don't see where I went wrong on here, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, this should be 10 above or 35 from the bottom. So usually it comes up really quick and it's easy to catch. The cutouts are there. Um, Hmm. Yep. I, mean, I just, I don't know what's, what's missing on here. Uh, I'll go back into that. Well, if everyone wants to kind of study the drawing here and, um, and see if they're, if they're seeing anything else that I missed or. Um, hmm. 95. Let's, let's, let's double check that. So let's check from here down to the bottom. What's the center line of that? 95. Uh, let me let's look at the equations again. Just double check these. What's this? So A is 213, B is 200. Actually, you know what? Do I have the right number written down here? Yep. <clears throat> All right, so 213, 200, 170, 130. 41, A divided by three, and then B divided by three plus 10. So those are all correct. Yep. Um, looks well, a little, go ahead. It looks a little tall somehow. Like, uh, like it, those things are a little higher off the uh, the plate than in the thing. I could be wrong. Yeah. So if we look here, it's ninety five from the bottom, right? Up yeah. to the center line of both of those. So it's called okay. the base here. I guess that's right. Let's go back here and look and see. And I'll just go normal to to here so we can see it and you look plain on. And we'll go from this edge to this circle. And um, along the, um, the Y is 95, so we can see it there. So it, that is correct as well. Can you put one of those, um, one of those pictures from the, the thing you're supposed to create on one half of your screen and this thing on the other half at the same scale? Just a little uh, trick, I know. Yeah, uh, we could probably do this. Let's escape out of here. So like you, you get them right on top of, right next to each other, aligned perfectly, and then you cross your eyes. Well, what we can do here is I'll show you guys a trick. Um, I'm just gonna, we'll save this. And I'm gonna bring this into an assembly. And drop it on the origin. And then I'm gonna bring in, uh, not a new part. Browse and let's see here. Let's go find. Probably wish I'd done the first place is just kind of op open this up really quickly and br brought in the the part. Uh, let's see if this is the part here. And we can drop it on there as well. Let's see, is it modeled the same way? Uh, let's hide this one. I think that might be a different version of it. That's a problem. No, oh, yeah, that's not even anywhere near it. So let's delete, that. let's delete this. And let's bring in, I think I, the thing is I always, um, I always save these on the desktop and then I, uh, I delete them most of the time. 
Yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm not in the class and I'm not taking it, but if I were, if I were trying to do it in real life, I'd, I'd get a, and I had a picture, I might just uh, drag the picture in or, or yeah. use a, a tracing program to, uh, to build a, a trace from one side and then import it into the CAD tool. Yeah. And there's a tool in here to do, to do body compare. Um, but so this part here, the blue one, it's purposely colored blue. So it's uh, highlighted different from the material. So if I show this one again, um, come on. There we go. Show components. Um, oh, it's exactly the same. <laughs> so I must have some, I must have the, the wrong number on written down or something. So um, I don't know. It's, Let's open this part and see. Okay. Old version file. Oh, okay. And then uh, let's, yeah, see 14, 207, 37. I think I'm having a problem with the, it not calculating it correctly for some reason. I don't know why. Um, because if we look at this, there's no, um, just update that, yeah. There's no real apparent, uh, you know what? Does it, I have, uh, does it, um, I, I don't know this tool again. When you subtracted the, um, the core out of those holes, um, it deleted some of the, the thing that was supporting it. I, I'm not familiar with the terminology. Yeah. Uh, would it have been different if you had subtracted the cylinder as a whole from that? I mean, is there like a copy you know, are there geometries that are interfering with each other and, and in the same space, but being counted twice? I, I, is that a problem with this tool? No, because a, a cut is still a cut. So um, it's, it should still, it still should show there. Um, let's go into wireframe and see if we can see anything a little bit different. Right. So basically right now we're seeing both parts overlaid on top of each other. Um, and there's just no, there's no differences. So I, I keep thinking to myself, I'm going back to the, the live part that we just modeled, um, that it's not updating the, the mass properties for some reason. Um, uh, we could try to cut something out and see what happens. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. I don't want to override. So let's just go in here and we'll just change one of these dimensions. Make this 250. No, no, it, it definitely changed it. Let's go back and change it if it goes back. Uh, it should be 213. Okay. Yeah, 14585. So I don't know. I'm gonna to have to um, just apologize. I can't figure it out, but if I if I figure it out, I'll let Elise know, and she can uh, she can communicate to you guys. Well, Mike, we're at, we're at nine o'clock. We're time to give out prizes. Yeah, it's kind of right on the nose, actually. Right. <laughs> Plus, my red light behind me just died, so it must be time to go. Right. The red light behind you? Yeah, one of my lights here. Battery operated. <laughs> You have such a great, uh, you have such a great uh, teleconferencing room there. Yeah. Looks like you're all ready to be on air or something. Yeah, we, we, we yeah I was admiring his studio earlier this week. Yeah, we, you can tell we kind of we do this quite a bit, um, even before what's going on now. We've um, we do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, webinars with customers and stuff like that. So I did one a couple of weeks ago with um, three hundred people at a company that we're gonna um, they're gonna try and certify eight hundred people this summer. Um, so we're hoping, wow. uh, yeah, so that'll be, that'd be kind of cool. Big customer of ours down in Orange County. Um, before I start pulling names for prizes, um, does anybody have any questions for Mike? Um, I think Jim might have had a question regarding materials that we were having issues with uh, during the last class. Yeah, but I'm not really sure how to <clears throat> format my question um, because it seems like just about every part that uh, that is in the exam is uh, 1060 alloy, 
with the exception of the gripper, which in part two of that question uh, changes to plain steel. Mm -hmm. um, but at least if you're referring to the, the material selection problem that I had, I think I solved that when I discovered that the, that the material hadn't even been selected out of the library yet. Um, so, but um, just to, okay. just a comment to, to Mike, thank you for being here tonight. Um, but it might not be reassuring to you, but is reassuring to me that to see a, a professional such as yourself still has problems with the mass properties. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those funny things. It's just, um, it, it, so it's, and I, I'm, I'm just kind of baffled um, what it is. So I'm, I'm, luckily it's, it's only nine o'clock here on the West Coast. So I'm, I'm probably going to stick up and try to figure out what's going on with this first. Uh, but yeah, going back to the material question, when you start a, depending on your, it's in your template as well. So a lot of times you'll see some people will have in their uh, templates, they'll have like inch stainless steel, inch brass, inch copper. So you can set that in there. So in my templates, they're just, there's no material specified. It's just not defined. Um, so I, I guess um, uh, it depends. Maybe that's where you're seeing it. So it's your template might have a, um, uh, a predefined material that is in there and you have to go and change it. Um, David had a question. Hi, Mike. So uh, I'm curious, what kind of uh, controller are you using to perform those uh, the manipulations where you're just moving it around? Uh, so definitely one of our really one of our coolest partner products that we have on the face of the earth. It's called okay. the 3D Connection Space Navigator. This is the uh, let's see if I can see it. This is the Space Mouse Wireless. Um, it works via um, um, little uh, Wi-Fi or a little the like the mouse chip that plugs in the USB port. Um, and so that um, it just allows you, it's almost like, imagine reaching your hand into the screen and being able to grab the model and manipulate it. So, um, so it, I love this thing. Uh, I think they're a hundred bucks. Um, I'm going to switch back over to SOLIDWORKS. Um, one, uh, so it's, it's just, it allows you to kind of get in and really select something that you, if you want to see something, right? So to try to recreate that mouse movement is just, you know, it's, you got to rotate around, then zoom in a little bit, then rotate around again, zoom in some more, rotate, then you've got to pan over. Whereas I can just, I can move around and see whatever I want in this. Um, you can get really lost in here, you know, um, to where all of a sudden it's, you don't even know where you're at. And that's where the F key comes in to fit back to screen. So yeah, I, again, it's, it's one of those things that if you buy one, give yourself a week to use it. And by the end of the week, you'll wonder how you want, why you never had one before. Um, and I've, I've paid for all the ones that I bought, so they don't, they don't pay me to, uh, to, 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 um, to sell them to you guys. All right. Thank you. Uh, Zach has a question. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, I, I, I was having a, a similar issue with uh, some of the uh, test problems that uh, at least gave us on CSWA. Uh, where you know I, I, I checked all my dimensions uh, on uh, modeling the part and uh, when I went to mass properties I came out with something that was very close to what the answer was supposed to be but uh, yeah, and within one percent and so I was wondering if uh, because the uh, there was an option uh, or there was, there was an indication in the question it's like did, if if your answer got within one percent um, uh, you, you know, like check and see if your answer got within one percent of one of the answers uh, that was given. Um, is is this something like because I, I couldn't figure out where I, I had gone wrong? Uh, you know, after double checking dimensions, uh, is that some uh, dimensions and uh, materials and everything? It, and even though it was very close, it wasn't exactly on there. Is that something within SolidWorks that um, you know I'm just not uh, finding that? Like sometimes you, it, it, you know, depending on. Uh, I, depending on certain variables, you, you come up with something close uh, to the answer, but not quite. Yeah. So uh, a couple of things. One is we do we do put tolerances in the exam, so um, to to kind of give a little bit of air, if you will. Um, this thing is it's supposed to measure fourteen two hundred seven point three four, and over the years I've seen it vary from like release to release. 
from 0.35 to 0.34. It's so um, sometimes maybe the kernel changes in some slight, but you're talking pretty far out into um, uh, dimension wise, right? Um, but we do put tolerances in there. Uh, second thing is um, e uh, email it to us, certification at solveworks.com um, and my team will look at it. So being the good people manager that I am, I'm, instead of trying to research this myself, I'm gonna send it to Avelino on my team tomorrow or email it tonight and say, hey, what did I do wrong here? And by the time I wake up, cause he's on the East Coast, by the time I get into the office, he's gonna say, oh, you missed this. He's gonna be able to look at it and see it right away. So um, my team is really good about responding and replying, stuff like that. Um, I think we're one of the few teams that has like a direct inbox where you can email us and it rarely goes more than a day when they reply back. So if you have an issue, send it to us and um, we can check. Same thing with an exam, if you fail an exam. Um, I would say don't challenge the guys and say, hey, I know I got this question right and your exam is wrong. Um, because the, the exams are thoroughly tested and uh, depending on their mood, they may tell you, well, we had a fourth grader last uh, week that passes, uh, got this question right, so here's where you were wrong. Um, so they may charge you a little bit here or there, but um, feel free to email it to us and we can take a look at it as well. Try and I know, and, uh, I, I'm very, uh, I, 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 I fully understand that it's probably my issue, um, but uh, what, what was that um, email address again? Uh, certification at solidworks.com. Pretty, pretty, okay. pretty straightforward, yeah. And th again, those guys are, they're pretty quick on those emails uh, replying back to them. So they, um, and they like challenges like this too. So I, I mean, don't feel bad. I, you know, um, I'm going to blame it on the fact that I spend more time in um, platform dashboards and 3D swing communities, uh, Excel and Outlook, and than I do in SOLIDWORKS these days. So my modeling skills are, are rusty. So I, the exam you guys are going to take, I, I don't even know if I could pass it these days. So um you know mike's being really modest here um zach if you do decide to email um certification at solidworks.com it's not at solidworks not at 3ds.com i know our colleagues in france actually have um certification at 3ds.com taken so we uh, uh, okay we, we might be one of the last people around that are going to have a an at solidworks email address so we'll <laughs> put certification to it i don't know yeah, but Zach, if you do email them, make sure you include um, attach your model so yeah. that they can look okay. at it. And sure. what I'll do is I'll send this at least to at least I'll send this to you with the what was wrong. I'll send you the model, and you can send it out to everybody if you want and yeah, pick it apart. Um, so does anybody else have a uh, Griffin has a question? Griffin. Griffin? Well, it looks like he's still on mute according to the icon. Oh. There he goes. Okay. Griffin? Sorry. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, there's a button on my headset. Uh, anyways, um, did you catch anything I said? Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Didn't hear you at all. all right. Sorry. Um, I'll try to uh, spit it out quicker here. Um, so I'm just wondering if I can use um, the global variable entering um, for dimensionings in SOLIDWORKS the same for mates. Is it a similar process that you showed us today? Uh, yeah, as long as you're typing a value into a, a field, into a, uh, a an input box, you should be able to. I'm not sure if there's any areas in the software where you, where you can't. Uh, I think that was, it's been around like that for a long time. All right, thank you. Um, Dylan had a question. Uh, yeah, it's my kind of a, I guess a nitpicky one, but when it says your answer is within 1%, is that like a bilateral where it's, uh, it's up half a percent, like the tolerance of answer that like you can only get half a percent above and a half percent below or. Uh, so, yeah, so this, it's a, this is a big question of a point of contention on the team sometimes, because then you're talking, talking about a volumetric uh, measurement as well. Right. Um, so, um, it's basically, I think it's a plus or minus 1%. So you're one side either way. Um, most of the time, the, the exam questions, with the exception of the expert exams, um, the very first time you model something, you're, it's going to be multiple choice. So on this one, you're going to see four answers. And you're going to want to, if, if, your, if your result is, it should be exact, right? If it's off like a little bit that you're uncomfortable with, then you might want to go back and check something. Uh, but that's the nice thing is you always have that one piece of mind check at the very beginning. But then after that, you're, you're kind of done for you. You're on your own because you'll just, the subsequent questions or answers, you have to type in the value. Um, so as long as you hit that one, like, like on this one being 14207.34, if it was 14200.34, um, it, it might be marked correct. But something is wrong in there, right? 
Um, so I'd want to get a little bit closer back to that value or, or one that's in there. So um, again, that's, I would be careful with uh, trying to use the tolerances to your advantage. Um, Jim had a question. Yeah. Um, to expand a little bit on the last question. Okay. Say in the first part of the question where it's multiple choice, you get it exactly right. Yep. No plus or minus 1%, no guessing, no dart throwing. When you move on to the second part of the question where you know all you're doing is changing the global variables and that they're linked and so the the part is not going to change in any other way other than those global variables and you look at the mass properties and you're getting an incorrect answer what um rather than calculating out and seeing if the you know, if you're within 1% of any reasonable number, since you can't tell because, it, you know, you have to enter it into the box, is it possible that you're going to get it right even though if you see it later, the, the numbers are different? Are they going to take that into account? Is the test program going to take that into account? Uh, so one thing, if you're making, if you're, if you're not performing any modeling changes and you're just changing variables um, and the question is multiple choice and it's off, then uh, one of the variable changes you made is wrong. Um, the only time you have to worry about that is if you're making a modeling change, um, like on, on this part, um, and by the way, I just figured out what I did wrong. Um, we actually come back and like put some grooves in here. Um, if you're doing that and changing the variables, then, um, then things can go kind of awry. But if you're only basically changing um, just the variables. Um, as long as you type in those numbers correctly, the computer is going to, the software is going to rebuild it at those numbers and it should be right. Yeah, usually if it's wrong, it's because you didn't link the variables to the dimensions that were placed. Yep. So um, real quickly, um, check out this dimension down here, five. And this is where I got kind of got, I got caught up um, in trying to figure out how to do this. Um, where I forgot. So that should be five millimeter thickness at the bottom. So if we go back here and look at this part and we measure from here to here and we look at a, a along Y, the distance, it's 10 millimeters. So let's go back in and find that cut extrude, edit it and make that 20. Control Q and then measure it 14, 207, 34, 35 or 34, exactly what it should be. So I don't know how I caught it. I just, I looked at it and I, that was the one dimension that I just didn't measure was. Um, Bravo. Yeah, it's just that the one dimension I didn't mention was from here to here. So that was it. So I didn't have to send it to, um, to Avellino. He would have made fun of me for that anyways. <laughs> yeah, mystery solved like uh, somebody's put in the chat. Would, would, would that have been... Uh... Uh, would you have figured that out if you had done a uh, uh, when you when you did the cut extrude if you had set it to offset from surface and click the the base of the of the part? Yeah. So again, it's it's one of those things, and I always struggle with this one. I don't I don't like the way I have to to do the feature. There is a way to cut it to where to maintain that and and not try to do the math on there. Um, but it's it sometimes it gets too fancy, I guess, and uh, I. I honestly can't remember the last time I did the presentation. Uh, well, I, I ran through it today just to be sure. Um, but I guess I didn't, uh, I got to this point and I just, I just kind of did it. So uh, I should have went back and reviewed the model in there. But again, that's a nice thing about with the exam um, in, in the, with the fact that you're going to be able to see the, um, the, the, the first results. And so if I was in the exam and I was that far off, I would know to go look for something. So um, it's kind of one of the benefits of us doing that where you can see, at least you're starting off on the right foot, but you're on your own after that. <laughs> okay, are we ready for prices? Yeah, so real quickly before, before you start that, um, Elise, I just want to say congratulations on a great career there at Laney College. Um, I've known you for, I don't know how many years now. Um, I think you were the very first user group that I ever went to and um, the only one that I really kind of really went to after I took on the manager role um, and, and let the guys kind of go on. So um, I, I've seen a lot of teachers around the country do um, teaching software students, but I've, I've rarely seen the, the, the caliber of projects 
that come from uh, that I see you come from your students. So, um, so congratulations on that on, on just being such. Well, a good my teacher. students are extra special. Well, it it all starts with the teacher. So, uh, <laughs> again, congrats on your retirement. Thanks for having me, letting me come over the years. Um, it's always a pleasure to come up and meet with the group. Always a good group of people. Always asking good questions. Um, I hope you kind of stick around the community, and we we still see you from time to time. And um, if you need anything from me, always you know we're always around to to help you out. Let's just let us know. Oh, that's very kind. Yeah, and hopefully you get to leave on your uh, your horse trip soon. Uh, hopefully they open things back up so you can get out on the road. Yeah, right now it's looking more like the end of June. Yeah, well, better better than never, right? Right. So, so congrats again, and uh, enjoy your retirement. Well deserved. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and take it away from. Uh,